Good morning. It is November 14th, and we'll be starting in Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 1. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Pharaoh, king of Egypt. A great monster who lives in the midst of his rivers, who has said, My river is my own, I have made it for myself, but I will put hooks in your jaws and cause the fish of your rivers to stick to your scales. I will bring you up out of the midst of your rivers, and all the fish in your rivers will stick to your scales. I will leave you in the wilderness, you and all the fish of your rivers, you shall fall on the open field. You shall not be picked up or gathered. I have given you food to the beasts of the field and to the birds of the heavens. Then all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. When they took hold of you with the hand, you broke and tore all their shoulders when they leaned on you. You broke and made all their backs quiver. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Surely I will bring a sword upon you and cut off from you man and beast, and the land of Egypt shall become desolate and waste. Then they will know that I am the Lord, because he said, The river is mine, and I have made it. Indeed, therefore I am against you and against your rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate from Migdal to Syene, and as far as the border of Ethiopia. Neither foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot a beast pass through it, and it shall be uninhabited forty years. I will make the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and among the cities that are laid waste. Their cities shall be desolate forty years, and I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries. Yet thus says the Lord God, at the end of forty years I will gather the Egyptians from the people among whom they were scattered, I will bring them back captives of Egypt and cause them to return to the land of Pathros, to the land of their origin, and there they shall be a lowly kingdom. It shall be a lowly kingdom of the lowliest of kingdoms. It shall never again exalt itself above the nations, for I will diminish them so that they will not rule over the nations any more. No longer shall it be the confidence of the house of Israel, but will remind them of their iniquity when they turned to follow them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord God. And it came to pass in the twenty-seventh year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to labor strenuously against Tyre. Every head was made bald, and every shoulder rubbed raw. Yet neither he nor his army received wages from Tyre, for the labor which they expended on it. Therefore this says the Lord God, Surely I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. He shall take away her wealth, carry off her spoil, and remove her pillage, and that will be the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor, because they worked for me, says the Lord God. In that day I will cause the horn of the house of Israel to spring forth, and I will open your mouth to speak in their midst. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Chapter 30 The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Send a man, prophesy, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Wail, woe to the day, for the day is near. Even the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, the time of Gentiles. The sword shall come upon Egypt, and great anguish shall be in Ethiopia. When the slain fall in Egypt, and they, and they take away her wealth, and her foundations are broken up, Egypt, Libya, Lydia, all the mingled people, Chub, and the men of the lands, and the men of the lands who are allied shall fall with them by the sword. Thus says the Lord, Those who uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down, from Migdal to Syene. Those within her shall fall by the sword, says the Lord God. They shall be desolate in the midst of the desolate countries, and her cities shall be in the midst of the cities that are laid waste. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. 
when I have set fire in Egypt and all her helpers are destroyed. On that day, messengers shall go forth from me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid, and great anguish shall come upon them as on the day of Egypt, for indeed it is coming. Thus says the Lord God, I will also make a multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and the people with him, the most terrible of nations, shall be brought to destroy the land. They shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. I will make the rivers dry and sell the land into the hand of the wicked. I will make the land waste and all that is in it by the hand of aliens. I, the Lord, have spoken. Thus says the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols and cause images to cease from Noph. There shall no longer be princes from the land of Egypt. I will put fear in the land of Egypt. I will make Pathros desolate, set fire to Zoan, and execute judgments in No. I will pour my fury on Sin, the strength of Egypt. I will cut off the multitude of No and set a fire in Egypt. Sin shall have a great pain. No shall be split open and Noph shall be in distress daily. The young men of Avon and Pi, Beseth, shall fall by the sword, and these cities shall go into captivity. At Taphnes the day shall also be darkened when I break the yokes of Egypt there, and her arrogant strength shall cease in her. As for her, a cloud shall cover her, and her daughters shall go into captivity. Thus I will execute judgments on Egypt. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month, on the seventh day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And see, it has not been bandaged for healing, nor a splint put on it to bind it, to make it strong enough to hold the sword. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Surely I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And I will break his arms, both the strong one and the one that is broken. And I will make the sword fall out of his hand. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries. I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand. I will break Pharaoh's arms, and he will groan before him with the groanings of a mortally wounded man. Thus I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, but the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down and they shall know that I am the Lord. When I put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon, and it stretches it out against the land of Babylon, I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries. They shall know that I am the Lord. Hebrews 11, starting at verse 32. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead raised to life. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might still obtain a better resurrection. Still others had a trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They, wanted, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth, and all these having obtained a good testimony, through faith did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Chapter 12. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. 
You have not resisted the bloodshed striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are chastening of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they, they indeed for days chastened us, as seemed best to them. But he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now to chastening, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Psalm 112, verse 1. Blessed is the man, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. The wicked will see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Proverbs 27, verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word, and we just pray that you would go before us today. Lord, we ask for a fresh filling of your spirit, that we might be a light in this lost world, Lord. Would you just give us opportunities, open doors, Lord, to, to share the gospel, to share your love, to speak truth, Lord, into people's lives. Lord, would you cause our lives to create a thirst in others? And Lord, we just ask, we ask you that you would just, um, just guide our steps today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.